Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is diving into TakeShape at TakeShape.io. Right off the bat, I am not affiliated with TakeShape. I am not earning affiliate cash for this. Uh, I don't have anything to do with TakeShape. I do, however, have a TakeShape sticker on my laptop because I like the colors. I have not, <laughs> not used the service yet. I'm that guy. I have the sticker on my laptop. Uh, I met the uh, the creators of Take Shape, and they're super cool. Uh, and I wanted to have the sticker on my laptop, so um, that's my connection to Take Shape. Let's get into it. This series, for those of you who don't know, is diving into different web services. So far, we've taken on uh, Hasura, we've taken on Begin, and these are two services that I didn't know necessarily enough about. And what I do is I dive into these services with knowing very little to nothing about them, just that they exist in this space. And I explore them as if somebody is looking at these things for the first time. Now, granted, not every one of these things I'm seeing for the very first time, but for the most part, it's the first time experiences here. So hopefully you can dive in and learn a little bit like this with me. So let's talk about Take Shape. This is Take Shape. Take Shape says that we make distributed content simple. Take Shape provides instant, intuitive, adaptable, collaborative services to power the Jamstack. So they're throwing out Jamstack to get started for free. So it's free to get started. Uh, they make distributed content simple. Content Sure, distributed. Okay, I'll, I'll, we'll see where the distributed part comes in. But it looks like it's something for your data, right? A solid foundation for your next Jamstack project. They're targeting people who use the Jamstack. Maybe you're hosting on Netlify. Maybe you're hosting um, somewhere that's front-end only and uses serverless uh, functions, those kind of things. Uh, drag and drop fields, collaborative editing. So it looks like they're focusing on the interface, which is good. And a lot of these services, honestly, do focus on the interface. Okay, so looks like they're emphasizing the interface. That's cool. Tie all of your services together. Ooh, we got a Shopify, we got a Stripe, we got a Contentful. Uh, is this, I don't know what this logo is. Um, is that Google Analytics maybe? I don't know, it doesn't say. Uh, this page, uh, okay, it worked. Just took a little while. Okay, mesh, interesting. Um, looks like there's a lot of things connected here. We're syncing things, meshes ties everything into a single API. Okay, so this seems to be a, a, a message here. One, it's it's a data. It looks like their their tagline at some point was a better CMS because that's what it is up here in the title bar. And maybe it still is, but they don't say that anywhere here. Looks like they're trying to be some sort of a CMS uh, as well as a static site generator. I'm actually a little surprised by the static site generator bit. I thought this was all about data, uh, but it looks like we have something for the front end here as well. It looks like you're building GraphQL APIs. Cool, big fan of GraphQL. If you don't know, check out what is GraphQL on Level Up Tutorials again. I'm a big fan of GraphQL APIs in general. Our API is GraphQL and I really enjoy it. Uh, so it looks like it's a framework to build GraphQL APIs. Intuitive experience for every team member. Content creators, project managers, and developers. Now what's great about this is of the three services that we've done so far, obviously none of them are, are that related. They are, they all, fall into the same sort of space in some sort of way, but they're not really that closely competing. Um, this is the first one that we've seen that really emphasizes content creators and project managers, uh, which to me is a big thing, right? Everybody's on WordPress still. And what are people using in 2020 if they're going to start a new project? Are you going to use a headless WordPress? I have two courses on headless WordPress and I don't like it. I'm not a huge fan. Uh, not to say you shouldn't learn it, because if you have a WordPress site that exists, building a front end for it with React or Svelte or, or Vue is a good idea. Um, but the experience isn't the best, right? If I was starting a project from scratch, I don't think I would reach immediately for WordPress for this kind of project, right? So it's nice that they have uh, content creators emphasized here. I'm always a big fan of a good interface. Um, I love their, their colors, which um, means a lot to me apparently. Um, with, without checking out anything else, but then maybe the pricing is important. Uh, my internet must be dragging or something. I don't know why this is slow. I don't know if it's their site or, or my internet, so don't get too mad about that. Looks like they have some, ooh, a little expensive pricing, a hundred bucks a month for the professional, zero a month. Remember it was 25 a month for begin for their professional plan uh, and then enterprise quotas. I, looks like this has unlimited content type, content entries, webhooks, high priority, 
at this point, if you're, you're needing this kind of thing, five team members, 100 bucks a month isn't terrible. I pay more than that in hosting, a lot more than that in hosting, by the way. Um, so if this is taking care of a lot of these things and your site's bringing in money, then 100 bucks a month really isn't that big of a deal. For hobbyists, you're not paying 100 bucks a month for uh, to test this thing out. So luckily, there is a free version. Gives us three team members, one static site, two locales, unlimited content types, nice, and 500 content entries. Okay, 500 content entries is a lot. I don't have too many sites that have more than 500 content entries. Level Up Tutorials obviously has more than 500 content entries, but um, even Syntax, our website only has 216. Uh, so really, not a, that's a lot. Let's do free forever. Let's click that button. I love this. So far, sign up form is nice looking. It looks like they're doing some of that material stuff where you have the label pop over and at leveluptuts.com and my full name. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna use this suggested password that you're all looking at. So I'm just gonna do a quick little cheapo password and sign in. I'll change it off video. So uh, y'all, you all, I don't, really, don't have access to my stuff. Okay, we got a, a welcome over here. Explore the tape shape book sample project. Uh, check out the quick start guide, let us know. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Mark's got a cool little icon down here, a nice little thing. I would assume that if I say, Hi, Mark here. Uh, he's not going to say hi back because I'm guessing that this is just an email. Take shape typically replies in a few hours. Yeah, this is probably that same service that everybody uses. Intercom, I think it is. All right, blank project. Ooh, uh, some uh, some projects here. Job board. E-commerce. Ooh, I like that there's an e-commerce template. A lot of e-commerce sites are a giant pain in the butt to get started. They're a pain in general. Uh, so there's an e-commerce store, open jobs, job boards, content modeling showcase, a blog, portfolio. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to select Shape Shop. Shape Shop, uh, one, Shape Shop is the best name out of all of these, Shape Blog, Shape Book, Shape Shop. It's alliteration there. Well, I guess Shape to start, start up, but that's hard to say. Shape Shop is great. Uh, and it's an e-commerce, right? We we got to see e-commerce going on. Uh, we'll call this Shape Shop because I love that name right here, Shape Shop. I don't know what's up with Mesh. Uh, I'm not going to find out right now. We're just going to get started with the basic. Click Creating, Created. I like that their button goes into a disabled state with a loading. I like that there is a little welcome thing. Okay. Um, what I'm learning about a lot of these services is how they onboard you, right? Whether or not like you're Hesura and you just, you, Hesura, the, the car pulls up and just shoves you out and just says, okay, you're here. Um, Begin was like a parade. They gave you all the stuff. It was like icons and do this, then this, then this. It was really nice. This is like a uh, nice little, hey, okay, model your content. You can drag and drop. Cool. I wouldn't necessarily have known that I could drag and drop without seeing this. Love the animated GIFs here or whatever they are. I don't know if they're GIFs. Slightly interested in finding that out, but how much do you care about that? It is a GIF. I was right about to. Now, if I had come back here, of course, I lost my my uh, thing here. So my curiosity got the best of me. Uh, but luckily, in addition to, I, I can't believe I just goofed that up. I wonder if you can bring that back at all. Uh, well, whatever. So in addition to, it looks like, all your stuff here. In addition to having that nice little onboarding, you also get step setup progress. You know who else does a really good job of this is Sentry at Sentry.io. They're a sponsor of Syntax. They are um, not affiliated with Level Up Tutorials in any sort of way, but um, I use Sentry personally for my error tracking. They lead you through this stuff like this where they give you a nice little percentage complete. I've always been a big fan of that. So create a content type, uh, create an entry, which it apparently has done been done for us. Retrieve your content with an API Explorer, GraphQL, beautiful. Ooh, it looks like it's even created some stuff for us already. We have categories in here. Uh, if you don't know about GraphQL, you gotta check it out. Again, this is nice. It's a nice little interesting um, CSS version of the graphical. I I like it. I don't know if it does a ton for me, but it, it's nice. Um, cool. We could explore the API. What exists in here? What queries? Ooh, lots of queries. So it looks like Take Shape is taking care of a lot of this stuff for you, especially if you're using one of these starters. Now, granted, a content manager or a project manager is not going to come in here and be like, 
oh, I can check out the GraphQL queries. That's not going to happen. Uh, so what are they going to do? Well, let's find out. They're going to head to maybe the homepage. They'll click on this. Oh, they'll see a, a photo here. I wonder if we can see the live version of this site somewhere. Let's see if we can find the live version of the site. Live version of the site. If that exists somewhere, well, I don't know. I'll find it eventually. I just wanted to see some updates here. Either way, we have our, it looks like we got a little nested doll situation where you can drag and drop things. For instance, we have a product in here. Can I drag this into here? No, that's not how it works. How do we add things to this? Add content type. There's, of course, a button. Um, this is content type, though. How do we change the widgets here? Because I can drag and move this around. Sure, I can do that. But how do I add things here? Not an asset library. Turns out I should have kept that uh, thing open. I'm guessing it's because right now we don't have a front end for this site or anything. I mean, that's not obviously that's not why this is like this. Here we go. I clicked the... Uh, if I do cancel here, if I click homepage, it takes us to this homepage where we can edit the content, right? And so I guess this is the whole content creator part of things, right? As a content creator, you can say, or a editor, project editor, you can say, oh, let me move these around. Let me do this and that. All right, uh, let me, oh, that's what these, these are for. Okay, so if I add a collection, this can just be super cool collection. And I don't have an image for this. Let's just see, image is required. Oh, they got images for me already. Cool. Okay. I can drag this. I have to drag it. Click create and it adds it here. Okay. So this is kind of interesting. We have our asset library. These are just images. These are collections that already exist. I'm guessing that if we were to look at our API Explorer and I were to look at those particular uh, collections, then it would give me the actual products in them. Um, let's go ahead and click save here. Again, if I were to click on this gear, it takes me to a totally different page where you can add different things. For instance, if I wanted to say, you know what, before uh, any of this stuff, we had the title, we have the hero. Maybe after the hero, let's go ahead and have a paragraph. I'm going to give this paragraph a title, and this paragraph title would be something like, um, you know, store policy, because that's, you know, obviously the most important thing that people look for when they get into a site. You can give this some instructions. Let's do add your policy here. Make it good, please. Okay. And you can add localization. That's nice. Description, maximum length, all these good things. It's like creating content fields. So this to me feels very interesting. It, it has a version, like an uh, versions over here. That's cool this interface right here, I'm not going to lie, is a little confusing. I should have sat and waited through that thing. I got antsy. I can't get it back. It would be cool if it was easy and obvious on how to get it back. I could just be dumb here. Uh, there's obviously those things. You have project settings, roles, members, billing, API keys, API explorer. Now I'm interested, we have this API explorer, right? We can query things. In fact, uh, I can check out... Um, collections. Let's do get product, get collection. If I do get collection, uh, it needs some kind of an argument. looks like uh, an ID. Ooh, what kind of collection IDs do we have here? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. Um, Okay, let's go ahead and do a query here. I'm going to do, sorry if this is a uh, small. It looks like you start every one of these with get. So get product list and maybe what's inside of a product. I'm just guessing the schema. Typically, I would actually <laughs> research what's in this stuff. But like, again, I'm trying this stuff out and this is how I like to explore things. Um, let's get the description of all of them. Let's run the query. Here we go. We have all of our products with their descriptions. I'm interested in this API. This is really neat. It's really cool that you can uh, create your content types, create all these things, and it generates such a robust API. It's a little overwhelming, the amount of queries that are generated here. There's a lot of stuff. This TS 
prefixed one, search, taxon, but it's at the same respect. If you were to really know what's going on here and you were to uh, be very experienced in looking at this stuff, then this isn't overwhelming because it does all this stuff for you. But as somebody who's just looking at this the first time, I honestly, I don't know what half of these queries do, despite the fact that they tell me. So I'm going to have to do some reading here again. Uh, it's all really neat. If I select product, this is interesting. Product is a type of multiple. I don't necessarily know what single multiple. I understand taxonomy is a tag, most likely. Looks like this is just a table full of data. I actually like this interface with this table. We have um, a somewhat similar interface for our core, our uh, admin section in Level Up Tutorials, but I like this one a little bit more than ours with the check boxes and stuff. You can modify the table preferences. Oh, that's neat. So we can turn on um, different things by, can you drag this? It has a little drag arrow, but I can't, um, but I can drag the price. They're grayed out. I would almost prefer that they don't even show up if I can't do it, but whatever. It's not a big deal. All right, price. There we go. Cool. New product. Add the new product. Um, hey, Mark replied. Whoa. Hey, Mark. This is pretty sweet. This is live, by the way. Uh, this is a very, There's like no editing in this. So um, let me send a little wave emoji to Mark because he's, he's the man for replying in the middle of this video. That's hilarious. Wave. Cool. Okay. Okay, so here we are, create a product. This is neat. These fields will all look nice. Sometimes it's a little disjointed here, right? Like we have this image thing and this choose button. There's a large space here. This space is the same amount of distance between this and this. Not my favorite design choice. Category, sure. Okay, so it, I'm not gonna hate on Take Shapes design because this is all material design stuff, but you have the name label that does this floating thing. But in the same regard, we have this category one that just sits up here. And this field takes up so much space and then you have so much space between this and this. Again, this is just minor, minor design nitpicking colors and whatever. These are all kind of weird. Again, the spacing between this and this is the same as this and this and this and this. I don't have a problem with it, but it's definitely uh, could be a little bit better. This is interesting. Nice little toggle. We can add sizes. Again, this is an e-commerce site out of the box. How many e-commerce sites or platforms do you know that give you an API like this to work with? I know Shopify has their own GraphQL API thing, but uh, actually, I don't know if it's GraphQL, but I've done, I've, I know Shopify has their own API thing, but this is really neat uh, that this did all this for me. And I like it. I think it's going to be one of those services that takes a little bit of time to really get your handle on where things are and what it does. But at the end of the day, it looks like this is a fantastic way to build some kind of an API and potentially a static site. In fact, we haven't really even talked about that. Let's go ahead and see if I can create a new static site from this. Say new site. Um, we can say it's gonna be on S3. Oh, I don't wanna do any of that. Um, could be on Netlify. Okay, so it looks like they're not hosting it themselves. Please link your take shape. I'm not gonna do this in this video. I, I was wondering if they were hosting this themselves. It looks like they're not, not a big deal. Uh, just something to keep in mind. I would pick Netlify out of those because I'm a big fan. Uh, they sponsor syntax, but like I was talking about Netlify before they sponsored us. So um, no conflict of interest there in my mind. Now I'm wondering about this URL. We have the API Explorer, right? How do I? <laughs> um, so if, if, let me, this is hilarious. I'm going to have to move the video in the final one because my video is normally in the right hand corner here. Uh, Mark just added a breakdancing GIF here and Mark is the man for doing that. So not only, <laughs> not only did Mark reply, but, uh, he knows who I am apparently. And, uh, that's awesome. What a cool guy. Um, thank you, Mark. I, I wonder if Mark, uh, if I met Mark at the, um, Jamstack conf, I, I met a couple of take shape people at a Jamstack conf. So <laughs> he asks if I'm working on a new tutorial. This is amazing. Uh, so shout out to, uh, Mark shout out. Um, if you're watching, uh, I really appreciate this. this is super fun. This is a nice touch. And to be honest, these are kind of the, the little things that'll make me want to use take shape more is that they, uh, 
they're actually not a human. I, I, I talked trash about this potentially being intercom. And even if it is intercom, it's, it's cool that, uh, it's not just like a robot. It's a person. Um, so that's awesome. How do I find the API URL? Okay, so I'm gonna close this. It might beep or something while we're going here. Uh, you might hear some beeps. And so Mark just sent me this link, which is uh, using the API endpoint. This is obviously in the documentation. Like one of the fun things about this series in my mind is the fact that I'm just not looking at the documentation. I'm just trying to experience things as somebody who's coming into this totally blind. Now, granted, if this was you and you were going to start this thing, probably one of the very first things you would do is head to the documentation and read. Uh, obviously, that's not what this course is about or this series is about, but uh, they have a lot of cool looking documentation. You know what? I like a lot of this stuff about their documentation, um, which is a big thing, right? We we, we have these, um, these projects that we use, and sometimes the documentation doesn't include the, the things that you want to have or the organization, but this looks like getting started, quick start, content modeling, collaborative web UI, all this stuff. And sure enough, one of the things in here was using the API endpoint, which I just happened to obviously not read because of where we're at in this series. My internet is being bad. I'm sorry about that. It says you can take a request of your API, the doc, um, the project endpoint, API take shape, the project ID forward slash GraphQL. Now, what is my project ID? I'm going to guess that it is this long string. Now, here is some feedback for the take shape team if you are watching. Uh, make that URL here somewhere. Make it so we can just like click it and and go there. Uh, we saw a couple of the other services do that. And um, I don't see it in any sort of way here. So just a minor nitpick there. Okay, API Explorer. I'm guessing that this is my project ID, Take Shape Projects. Um, so actually, let me... How do I even, what's the best way to do this here? Um, I'm going to copy this one and I'm going to paste it in here. I'm gonna leave this here and then I'm gonna head here and then copy this one. So again, just minor feedback. This would be easier if there was, and there, there might be, who knows. Uh, okay, cool. So this is missing some sort of authentication token, which is nice because that means the API is secured by default which means that you're most likely going to have to add some sort of authentication header, which is why we're getting hit by this. And most likely that is all explained right here where it talks about the authorization headers, okay? So again, this is just me experiencing this stuff. Really cool though, because obviously if you had a API like this um, and you were creating it, uh, th this is pretty much what you would do. So it looks like there is the static site thing uh, that looks really nice that I want to dive into a little bit more on my own time. But if we're here, we log in, we're a content editor. You can see this, you can replace these images, you can change this title, you can add things, you can add collections, you can add products, you can add taxonomy. This is really nice. I would love to see this interface maybe elaborated on a little bit more. You know, some of the nice things about WordPress, even though I, I trashed it in some ways, uh, is that they they make that admin editing experience really easy for non-technical people to navigate um, between the gears and where to click here, the fact that these are two separate click targets, I think that might confuse some people um, getting into that. They might think that they need to click this and then all of a sudden they're in this interface. So definitely some things to consider there. But all in all, this service is really cool. And this space is really interesting right now. I keep clicking on that. This service is, uh, this space is really interesting. There's so many different people competing for who's going to do this backend piece, who's going to do this hosting piece, who's going to do this CMS piece. And this one fits more into the territory of a CMS replacement that gives you a GraphQL API and potentially a static site if you want it. Now there's this also this whole thing with this mesh that allows you to connect all these different services from what I'm understanding here. Uh, and it looks like there's a whole bunch more that Take Shape can do, including one of these like common recipes. It's really nice. All this stuff that it created for us is all really super nice. Looks like Static Sites is a pretty uh, neat little part of this collaborative web URI content modeling. So again, out of all the ones we've looked at so far, this is the most of a CMS. And I really like that. Uh, Take Shape 
is something I'm going to keep my eye on. And it looks like uh, you can sign up for beta access for Mesh. Maybe it's out by the time you're watching this. Maybe I'll sign up for beta access and give it a try. Maybe we'll have to do a separate video on Take Shape Mesh. Uh, try it out. Let me know if you're interested in that. Check out their documentation. Uh, check out TakeShape.io. Check it out. Again, I have no affiliation with them. I'm not getting affiliate cash for this. I think it's fantastic. I like the interface and I can't wait to see what they do uh, with their product from here on out. So thank you so much for watching. I'm going to see you in the next one. We have so many more services to cover. Let me know if there's any particular web service that you want to see covered and you want to see covered through the eyes of somebody who doesn't really know what the details are here. We're exploring these things together, right? So I have some on my list. We're going to do Contentful. We're going to do Sanity. Um, we're we're going to do a whole lot. And we're even going to explore some that I know a little bit more about. And that might be unfair. But again, I just want to explore these services. So let me know what you think. Oh, and uh, let's get a little silly here at the end. If you want a podcast to listen to, check out syntax.fm. I do a, a twice weekly show with the incredible West Boss, and he and I talk about all sorts of stuff. The latest video was Tech to Watch in 2020, uh, where we are even sponsored by Sanity, one of the services I wanted to look at. Uh, so, Tech to Watch in 2020, we even talked about Headless Space here. We talked a little bit about it. And if you want, check out leveluptutorials.com. We recently launched courses which are guided paths through learning different tutorials that show you where to go next, give you a nice little green little check mark, and a lot more coming here. So leveluptutorials.com forward slash pro sign up for the year and get to 25% off. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.